Derek, is it true or the Beatles really finished? No, not until they die. As long as they live and as long as they like each other, the, the, anything can happen. Then how do we understand today's developments? Well, today's developments are interesting. The Paul's first clarification of his position, uh, and uh, alongside the album, which is entirely solo, right down to the packaging, uh, they seem to show um, a desire on his part to show that he too can go it alone for a time, like John has. John's done it by deed, and, and Paul's done it with an album and a, and a few words. But Paul says in his announcement that he cannot conceive of a date when he and John Lennon will work together no, again. I'm talking about Beatles or songwriting. I think it's been clear, you know, for a long time that the songwriting they did together uh, wasn't really the key to it. That they're both able to write alone. The reason they wrote together really was for speed and also because they were on the road together a lot. But for years, many songs have clearly been McCartney songs or Lennon songs. But I think that the fact that he says he doesn't foresee a time is, um, I think that's sad. Um, but the future is open. I think it's sad. Sad in what way? Well, just because of how it's always been. I, you know, this is. We live day to day here, and we live with events, but um, we sometimes look back to the days when it was when we were younger, when we were all on the road together. But it's not the end of anything, because now instead of one song, you get two. Like, instead of one album by the Beatles, we're going to get one by each of them. So they're very viable still commercially, and they can always go back together. I think if Paul had wanted the Beatles to end, he would have ended it in, in the statement, but he hasn't. He says, I think it's in there, is the break temporary or permanent? He says, I don't know. He does say that he no longer has any relationship with the business advisor that's... He never did have that. <clears throat> Part of the problem is that he doesn't like Alan Klein. So it's not wholly personal reasons? No, it's a bit, he says personal business and musical. There's a desire. They left school, you see, and became Beatles. They never were independent people. They left a collective environment like school, and then they became Beatles. And none of them ever found what they could make alone, so now they're finding out. And it's healthy enough. The fans, the real fans, will be the first to understand all of this. Well, the fans who are gathered outside right now seem to generally have an interpretation that it's his wife. It's Paul McCartney's wife, the evil one. They're calling her all sorts of names. Yes, well, she's bound to be a scapegoat, isn't she? Because if they're girls with some sort of image of Paul as an available bachelor, which is difficult to eradicate, then they'll they'll see they'll see and see and speak about Linda. But they know very well, because they know more about the Beatles than the Beatles do, that as long as the four of them are alive, then, then there still is a Beatles. There's no such thing as an ex-Beatle or a former Beatle or a retired Beatle, because. Um, the Beatles are something other than a pop group. I mean, many pop groups are broken up, but the Beatles are not a pop group. They're an abstraction, a sort of a repository for many, for many things. So it's, it's sort of like a pigeonhole in the sky that you can put something in and get an answer, and a sort of Beatles response to a situation. Do you understand what I mean? And I think that they ful fulfill a need in in, uh, in, in the media for... Uh, something that's there that's cheerful and and human and rich and somehow invulnerable so the beatles if the beatles is alive as an idea then i think all four beatles will respond to that idea at some time or other and become beatles again but it's possible they'll never put out another album or another oh, it's film. possible but it's less than probable how can you see them getting together again only by making a phone call oh well, by John thinking, I wonder how Paul is, and then from there, from that point, as soon as you decide to pick up the phone, I mean, anything can happen. Provided there's a willingness among them to like each other, which still exists, you see, that they like each other, but they'd prefer to work alone. Paul's last statement here in this interview is, 
My only plan is to grow up. Hmm. He seems to think that that has to be done now outside the well, context. Well, it has to be done really all the time until you die. I mean, to assume that you've grown up at 27 would be a mistake, wouldn't it? If you're fully grown up at 27, then you might as well die right then and there. How do you see things, Mavis? I'm glad that a lot of unanswered questions have been answered. And I'm also glad that Paul hasn't definitely said that there's a split because he hasn't said this. And I'm glad of it. And as Derek said, that if there was going to be a split, he would have said so. Do you think that the split is irretrievable? Or that the breakup is irretrievable? What if it, it isn't because he, he leaves it open? Uh, I think people say, that's that. I mean, that's that, that's you and me finished, that's it, that is a load of, you know, that is not real. That's it, people say, are we? We're talking about the end, okay, this is the end, aren't we? And so, the end of the Beatles, and Paul's saying, I mean, like Paul would tell 100,000 million people that he didn't want anything to do with the Beatles again, it's sort of a very negative trip that I don't think would ever happen. The interesting thing about this is that he takes people into, the, in, into his confidence and says, I'm not getting on well with the Beatles at the moment. And if you ask me if it's forever, bearing in mind that these are all questions he asks himself and then offers to people, he's not pressed to answer them. Uh, but if you want to know where I stand, I don't know whether I'm going back with them and, uh, and that's it, sort of leaving it in the air. Instead of this business we're accustomed to, because I think the media not necessarily television, really, but the, the, the printed media are always after these cut and dried things like I'm finished with you and, and divorce and um, uh, clash, conflict, split, break, collapse, and all those sort of end words which really don't happen in life. Everyone knows in their own families that you can have the worst falling out when, and, and uh, Christmas comes and you have reunions. By the end of Christmas, you're in terrible trouble again because you're split. And, but if only the media could somehow uh, complicate issues again instead of always oversimplifying them and point out to people at home, actually look into the camera and say, listen, you know it's not as simple as that, that the Beatles have broken up. Because what if they came together again then? So there is no split as long as there's life. No one splits with anyone. Japan, like, is no longer the yellow peril. And can you imagine a situation in 1944 when, when Prince Charles is sitting with Hirohito, who was a real, he was a Jap bastard. He was the enemy. But he's now talking to Prince Charles. And um, he says, I'm not the sun god anymore, so let me stay. So the, so the Americans, you know it. John, if the Beatles don't get together again in the foreseeable future, do you think they'll, their role can ever be taken over by anyone else? Well, no, their role, what is their role? They, they are, they are, you see. That's another, you're simplifying. What, what role? What is the Beatles' role? The word that the Beatles means to everyone in this country. It means something. Can that something ever be replaced? No, uh, but it doesn't have to be replaced as long as something as good as it... Uh, is also also exists. I think that whatever they are, always you know, it's always there, whatever they've been, and uh, it's part of all our growing up. The Beatles. We can find that they were wrong. We can find that they led us the wrong way. But maybe it was okay at the time, you know. Maybe what looks wrong later uh, was was right at the time. I think that the Beatles. Uh, have changed so many lives that um, the need for them still exists, the hope that they represent still exists, and as long as that exists, then they have to exist. I mean, they've got to be there to fulfill that need. And who are they to, to take themselves away to say, okay, kids, uh, that's it. They're not going to do that. And, and, and anyway, no one's going to let them do it, so it's all the time. We need you, so you are. Oh, we don't need you anymore, so you needn't be. But then they say, oh, you can't ignore us because we exist. So then the fans say, okay, if we exist, if you exist, when we take you again. So it's to and fro. We're all in it together. 
If the Beatles don't exist, you don't exist. Something like that. Derek, is it is it true? Are the Beatles really finished? Well, Paul says that he cannot foresee the day that Paul says that he cannot foresee the day when he and John Lennon will write songs together again. Can the Beatles ever be replaced? Savile Row. Yeah. The small gathering on Savile Row is only the beginning. The event is so momentous that historians may one day view it as a landmark in the decline of the British Empire. The Beatles are breaking up. The small gathering on Savile Row is only the beginning. The event is so momentous that historians may one day view it as a landmark in the decline of the British Empire. The Beatles are breaking up. The small gathering on Savile Row is just the first reaction. The event is so momentous that his... Derek, is it true or are the Beatles really finished? No, not until they die. As long as they live and as long as they like each other, the, the, anything can happen. And how do we understand today's developments? Well, today's developments are interesting. The Paul's first clarification of his position, uh, and uh, alongside the album, which is entirely solo, right down to the packaging, uh, wasn't really the key to it. That they're both able to write alone. The reason they wrote together really was for speed, and also because they were on the road together a lot. But for years, many songs have clearly been McCartney songs or Lennon songs. But I think that the fact that he says he doesn't foresee a time is, um, I think that's sad. Um, but the future is open. But I think it's sad. Sad in what way? Well, just because of how it's always been. I mean, you know, this is, we live day to day here and we live with events, but um, we sometimes look back to the days when it was, when we were younger when we were on the road together. But it's not the end of anything, because now instead of one song, you get two. Like, instead of one album by the Beatles, we're going to get one by each of them. So they're very violent. They seem to show um, a desire on his part to show that he, too, can go it alone for time, like John has. John's done it by deed, and, and Paul's done it with an album and a, and a few words. 
But Paul says in his announcement that he cannot conceive of a date when he and John Lennon will work together no, again. No, talking about Beatles or songwriting. I think it's been clear, you know, for a long time that the songwriting they did together uh, viable still commercially, and they can always go back together. I think if Paul had wanted the Beatles to end, he would have ended it in, in the statement, but he hasn't. He says, I think it's in there, is the break temporary or permanent? He says, I don't know. He does say that he no longer has any relationship with the business advisor that's... He never did have, though. And part of the problem is that he doesn't like Alan Klein. So it's not...